Hi, Bother Brigade. Here's what's bothering me today. There is a story in the States that should be much bigger news. In fact, it should have been national news for the better part of two weeks now, but it hasn't been, and we're going to get into that right now. So the story that people should be aware of is the fact that Jackson, Mississippi is supposed to go without reliable drinking water indefinitely. So this came up right at the end of the month, and there's a few key points in this Reuters article that I want to get through to kind of show just how bad the situation is and the variety of factors leading up to this. Jackson, Mississippi will go without reliable drinking water indefinitely, officials said on Monday, after pumps at the main water treatment plant failed, leading to an emergency distribution of bottled water and tanker trucks for 180,000 people. The city linked the failure to complications from the flooding of the Pearl River, but Governor Tate Reeves, who declared a state of emergency, said the cause was unknown and that the city-run water treatment plant had been poorly operated and understaffed for years. So that is all happening in a city of 150,000 people with like 30,000 in the suburbs and kind of adjoining areas. And Jackson, Mississippi is the largest city in Mississippi, by the way. And all these residents have just been told that they may have to go without clean, safe drinking water indefinitely. They also issued a boil water advisory saying that they should boil water for three minutes. However, there's a problem with that, especially when you consider that this is their water quality. That, you know, thick brown sludge, practically, I don't think anyone's going to want to drink that after three minutes, and I highly doubt that such water quality is going to be safe after three minutes of boiling. So, what ultimately kicked off this crisis? According to the city... They said that recent flooding of the Pearl River created complications at the OB Curtis Water Treatment Plant, which sits next to a reservoir that drains into the river just north of town. The town has been under a boiled water alert for a month. So let me get this straight. The largest city in Mississippi, beyond when this, like, should have been groundbreaking news about no water indefinitely, broke on August 31st. You're telling me that for the entire month before that... They were on a boil water advisory, and that wasn't news. You know, it's kind of a point of shame here in Canada to those of us paying attention that a lot of indigenous communities are on boil water advisories, and yet here is the biggest city in the state of Mississippi on an effectively indefinite boil water advisory, and they have no clean water. Like, what? You would think that that would be bigger news in what's supposed to be one of the 50 states in the richest country on earth. But I digress. So the immediate cause of this crisis was kicked off by flooding, which may or may not be a result of climate change driving flooding and just like irregular rainfall patterns for the Mississippi and other areas. So yeah, we could, you know, part of this could be because of climate change. However, couple of things. I want to put into perspective just how universal and bad this is. On August 30th, 2022, Twitter user is that Brit said, no running water in Jackson. The heat index is 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Schools and universities are closed. No way to cook, clean, bathe. This is the capital city and the biggest city in Mississippi. So they've effectively had a shutdown because there's no clean water for anything and this was again all kicked off by the may or may not have been climate driven flooding of the pearl river but there's also the other part that the article talks about about how it has been chronically understaffed and underfunded for years so what's up with that why so much underfunding more people need to be talking about Jackson, Mississippi. The city ran out of bottled water to give residents yesterday. It's the largest city in Mississippi. It's 80% black. Their water system is failing because of years of neglect. This is environmental racism. And she's not the only one pointing out the obvious here, unfortunately. The same day, WV Rising pointed out, right now it is 91 degrees in Jackson and they don't have any running water. The line to get a single case of bottled water is over a mile long. The city is 79% black. So yeah, unfortunately it should surprise no one that the reason this is happening is precisely because of decades of institutional and systemic racism in the state of Mississippi. 
after Brown v. Board of Education, white Mississippians left Jackson rather than have their children attend school with black children. Black families were left behind, and the tax base necessary for infrastructure improvements and repairs was decimated. This water crisis equals the legacy of racism. Yeah, so because a bunch of white people were pissy at the idea of having to share space with black people in a state that has, again, a ton of black people, they've now decided to be very petty and make it black people's problem in the state so that they have no actual amount of money or infrastructure to help them. And so unfortunately, what this means, you have lots of nice segregate, like segregation still exists in many corners of the South. Let's be real here. You have nice, cozy little white communities that are technically not part of the city. They're like, you know, suburbs or whatever and that's where all the money and the low taxes etc are but they go into the city for all their needs and for jobs etc but they take all that income to these other communities basically what's happening to jackson right now is the same thing that happened to detroit which again people can watch the progressive profiles uh, episode talking with detroit will breathe representative nikia wallace going into that history and why it is the way it is it's basically because of racism right and so what you have in this situation is very similar where a bunch of white people decided oh we don't like you know, having to share space with black people. So we're going to, to flee outside of the official city limits. And that just immediately impoverishes the city. So they don't have the funds necessary to actually take care of the infrastructure that most people would rightfully understand is critical to the functioning of the city and the state. And so with the lack of funding, this means you can't actually do upgrades or repairs or just basic maintenance. And so things start to fall apart. And then, oh, look, now because of like on top of it, it was kind of just the climate change based flood that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Now, the largest city in Mississippi is forced to go without clean, safe drinking water indefinitely. Not for a week, not for a month, not for, you know, six months, not for a year indefinitely imagine the largest city in your state or a province or a county or whatever it may be suddenly without warning being without safe drinking water imagine here in ontario if toronto suddenly just went without safe drinking water it'd be front page news imagine new york city no safe drinking water that would be everywhere but it's in mississippi and it has to do with decades of abuse and neglect and environmental racism and systemic racism all stemming from pissy little white people who didn't want to share space with black people throw climate change into the mix and oh boy howdy we have a disaster decades in the making and apparently these people had already been on a boil water advisory for a month before that and already folks this episode is several weeks after this was first brought to my attention now as of recording some places are finally starting to talk about this but it's still not exactly gaining wider traction and also unfortunately the only bit of good news from this so far has been that the epa is investigating problem with that is that the epa investigated beforehand and they said hey yeah here's some problems you should do these things fix this this and this and <clears throat> Jackson, Mississippi kind of rightfully said, okay, but like with what money, my guy? So the EPA is investigating. They're going to find what's wrong. They're going to correctly identify the problem. And then it's not going to be fixed because the actual tax base doesn't exist. And unfortunately, most people aren't going to care enough about it, especially in, you know, the federal sphere of politics to meaningfully fund Jackson, Mississippi so that they can actually get out of this mess. So what unfortunately is to be done? No one seemingly at the state level wants to help. No one at the federal level really quite frankly is going to care about this, especially in a midterm year. Media has only just started to pick up on this because like, I guess they were probably forced to, but again, it has been weeks of a proverbial silence outside of activists and those in Jackson, Mississippi. Which brings us to the people who are helping right now, which are locals in Jackson, Mississippi. So in the description down below, I'm going to link to a Twitter thread that has a ton of different groups and orgs and uh, cash app accounts that people can send money to for people and organizations. And like there's a few churches in there as well that are doing the good work right now, trying to keep people, you know, hydrated in Jackson, Mississippi. It is so 
deeply frustrating and incredibly disturbing that this is a story that has gone on for nearly two months now. First, with the month-long boil water advisory in, again, the largest city in the state of Mississippi. And that, there was nothing about that. And then when you finally had the straw that broke the camel's back and they just had no clean water whatsoever and it just became more of a crisis, there was still silence for the next two weeks after that. We are now looking at six plus weeks of a incredibly disturbing and distressing and nightmarish apocalyptic scenario happening for the residents of Jackson and no one has been talking about it outside of locals and again all of this stems from racism and climate change that good old double whammy it is so deeply disturbing and unfortunate that no one has been talking about this or caring about this and that unfortunately the solution by the EPA isn't going to meaningfully be fixed. This is a crisis that has been decades in the making and the solutions are there but they haven't been undertaken and the media isn't paying attention to this and unfortunately the situation isn't going to get better anytime soon and unfortunately a great many people aren't even aware that this situation is happening when it's incredibly dire and a sign of societal collapse and the fact that i'm one of the few people talking about this is definitely what's bothering me today